We are taking an airship today, flying from Los Angeles to Salt Lake City with Dorothy and her mother. So first we are to the airport where the planes come in and go out. Next, we must buy our tickets. One ticket for Dorothy, one for Mother. Trip 12 to San Diego, now ready at gate 9. Forward. We go through to the landing field. It would be dangerous to walk out on the busy field with airplanes darting about. So we go only as far as the gate. See that one? And the big one over there? They are wheeling our plane into place on its big, soft tires. It is made of metal. It has two motors and two propellers. This kind of ship with one set of wings is called a monoplane. The windows in front are for the pilot. Our windows are those farther back. At each landing field, men called mechanics come in with their tools and oil and grease to put the plane in safe condition for flying. This man is greasing one of the two propellers, which will help pull us through the air when the motors make them spin. Another mechanic is pulling down an electric battery to see that it is in good shape. And this man is working on one of the plane's two big motors. The windows of the plane are all being washed. What an odd place to put gasoline for the motors. In tanks built inside the huge hollow wings. Our ship is almost ready. They're beginning to warm up its motors. Now they are bringing it up so that we can climb aboard. When we go aboard, we shall climb up these steps they are putting in place. They stow our baggage and other packages in this part of the plane, underneath the pilot's seat in the front of the ship. Pilot and stewardess go aboard first. And now the passengers, while this man checks the name of each one. In we go. It is almost time to start. How roomy it is inside the big plane. Our seats look quite comfortable too. Away go our stairs. The stewardess takes care of our coats and makes us feel at home. Fasten seat belts, the sign says. The stewardess helps Dorothy and her mother. It is Dorothy's first airplane trip. Here we go. We have left the ground. We are flying. Flying low, just high enough to skim above the buildings at the end of the field. One last view of the airport which we just left. We rise quickly above a tangle of railroads, three bridges over a river, square blocks of houses and city streets, and the large buildings of the business part of Los Angeles. Faster and higher we are away and soaring over fields and mountains. Those little white lines are highways. We are far up in the air, and now up among the clouds. The pilot pulls back the control. He wants to go even higher. 
See how the plane seems to fly upward. As we rise higher and higher, we see below us only fluffy clouds. Clouds below and clouds above. We are flying over the Sierra Nevada mountains. See that? Dorothy has a good view from her window. The mountains below hardly look real. We're so high above them. I thought the steward is doing something back there. This is what Dorothy's interested in. What a cozy little kitchen. And how carefully the dishes are placed. The stewardess is preparing food for all the passengers. Here comes the tray of food for someone. Is it for me? The pilot and his helper, the co-pilot, are watching their work closely. We are going 190 miles an hour. No wonder we are already reaching San Francisco. This is San Francisco, and this is San Francisco Bay, and at the back, the long span of the Golden Gate Bridge. We are turning eastward, over the land again, above the roads and the hills. Dorothy sees that we have left the level water and are skimming over the tops of hills, hills with tall trees on their sides. And now, after the hills, broad, level farmlands. Our pilot is taking us higher again, over the clouds again. The clouds are beautiful, but they hide dangerous, sharp mountaintops. The pilot over his radio telephone, asks about the weather. Williams, United, trip 15, calling Salt Lake. Will you give me the last Salt Lake, San Francisco weather? Go ahead. They tell him the weather ahead is good. So we fly on, over hills and desert valleys. Evening is coming on. But our pilot knows how to fly by night, as well as by day. Some of the passengers will stay aboard the plane all night. And the stewardess is making up their beds so they can sleep while flying high in the sky. The pilot is always watching carefully. How roomy and comfortable the beds appear. It would be fun to sleep in an airplane. But now we can just see the great salt lake below us. And now, the lights of Salt Lake City, near which we will land. Can you see the runways for the planes at the airport below? We are safely down from the air again, and our pilot steers the ship along up to where Dorothy and her mother will get out. In the darkness of late evening, our long journey by air is over. It hasn't seemed long. Our baggage is taken to where we can pick it up later. Now they bring on more gasoline for the plane. And here are more passengers. They will go to cities farther east. The plane will reach New York in the morning. Our good ship starts across the level runway into the darkness. Gracefully it gathers speed. And now it hurls itself from the ground and roars on eastward 
into the night